Hey guys, welcome to the Soul Doctor channel. In this video, I want to go over the Mega Soul Charger Professional, the hobby version. I call hobby version the Mega Soul Charger with the plastic case. And in this video, we'll go over all the features that you can find in this version as well. The easiest way to check the features is going to the Mega Soul Charger Pro. and you have here a 360 animation with all the features but i will choose to maximize it to make it easier to see what it's all about all right so i will go over all the features and also try to explain how is this different from the early version of the Mega Soul Charger. They look quite similar, but there have been a lot of changes in the components that are used to test the cells. So we still have the micro USB, but compared with the older version of the Mega Soul Charger, we have rewritten the code that takes care of the communication between the Mega Soul Charger and the Mega Cell Monitor. We're still working on uh, finishing the implementation, but it should be a few weeks, one or two weeks, uh, probably it will be in there. This micro USB is used with a regular USB cable, connect the Megacell charger to the computer, and then you select the option from Megacell monitor. This can also be used to write the firmware, but I would recommend sticking to the web-based version of writing the firmware. And I will show that in a future video. All right, so let's start with 16 slots. Same number of slots as before, but compared with the early version of the Mega Soul Charger, we now have 4.2 amps per cell uh, capability of charging and uh, we also can set the variable voltage from 3.5 volts to 4.4 volts so we cover a wide range of cells and we could set before the voltage in mega cell monitor but the current will not drop off and follow the curve properly it will uh, it will be a steep interruption when it reaches uh, 3.7 volts for example and the cell will not be top up but with the new ic that we're using to handle the charging we have this ability to set the target voltage and it will follow the charging curve to make sure the cell is fully charged. We also changed the discharging mode of the Mega Cell Charger Pro and this is what's different. Before we had the 1 amp per slot ability to charge and we could set a discharge rate from 100 to 1000 milliamps but that will be the setting for all 16 slots. You could not change that independently on each slot. Let's say you want to set a discharge rate, a different discharge rate uh, for each port so you can sample the quality of the cell you're using for your pack to see the capacity uh, that uh, you get when discharging with 2 amps versus with uh, half an amp and stuff like this. So with the new changes it will allow us to set for each port an independent uh, way of discharging and not only that you can set the discharge current we also added two additional ways of discharging and the first one and most used I, I used it in testing all the cells since I have implemented this it's constant current this will change the resistance depending on the voltage of the cell to keep it to the set current, discharge current. Let's say you have a load of one amp and you want to keep that load um, no matter if it, the cell is at 4.2 or it's at 3 volts. So that's a major improvement, being able to keep the, cur the current constant and uh, have a linear discharge rate using this. The second option is the constant voltage. So you could set a voltage of 3.6 volts for discharging and uh, the charger will attempt to reach that voltage. It will go to the maximum discharge that it's set 
for discharging rate uh, and if it reaches 3.6 volts it will taper off the discharge power the the discharge current until it keeps it uh, until it reaches the threshold that's set for the minimum so you will see the cell being set at 3.6 volts very precisely with a with a precision of a, a couple of millivolts but that's that's a major improvement uh, for being able to set the cell at a, a constant voltage and we also have the um, the ability of constant resistance this is the way we had it before with the mega cell charger uh, we set a resistance and uh, a cell will discharge will start at a current of one amp and probably finish at around 900 milliamps discharge rate depending depending on the voltage on the target voltage that you are setting so yeah that's the change for the slots discharging and charging for the hobby version with the cooling that it has at the moment i would recommend not going above two amps for discharging if you're not adding additional cooling or have some fans on top and you're running all 16 cells if you want to test with three amps discharge i will recommend uh, going with eight cells per device in this way it will have enough cooling power to cool at 3 amps per cell right so let's move to the next feature the next feature is having two temperature sensors for each cell we have the active temperature sensor that we're monitoring and we're seeing in the software as well that allows us to set the threshold for the max temperature that we are allowing the cells to go to to go up to before we are cutting off the charging or the discharging process the second sensor and it's quite small to see in this picture but it's a bit upper than uh, this small sensor right here that's a static sensor that's a fixed sensor it will cut the charging if temperature goes above 55 degrees you will see the green led blinking on this hobby version and that means that the temperature is too high under the cell all right so right here we have the charging and discharging status leds uh, green means cell is charging orange means cell is discharging right here we have the vents for cooling and under the hood we have the ESP8266 uh, that's powering the logic of this uh, device it's also communicating via Wi-Fi with the Megacell monitor software and you can send commands and receive it but I will keep this video focused on the megacell charger itself uh, we're going to go through the menu as well see what's available from the buttons and in a future video we'll go over the megacell monitor as well so in this video we are focusing on megacell charger pro hobby version the standalone usage of it right so we have the esp like i said and here you you'll see two buttons the menu up button and the reset button that we had before on the mega cell charger the first version it became a menu button as well this allows us to use the menu easier and have more options in terms of control for the power input there's a major change as well before we had only 5 volts input power at a power of 20 amps and now we can power this device from 5 volts to 16 volts and powering with the 12 volts power supply and 30 amps allows us to use the full charging capability of this device at 4.2 amps and it also draws less current than if you would have used a 5 volts power supply if you're using a 5 volts power supply you should be looking at about 70 to 80 amps power supplies and you also need some thick cables for that so i would recommend going with the 12 volts power supply those are easier to find and also are more reliable because they are using less current when you're upping the current the components inside tend to get pretty hot and you need better cooling and that's why we opted for using the 12 volts power supplies on this charger 
you'll notice that we also have a new set of connectors with six pins each. These are called XS12 connectors in case you want to source them yourself to, to place it on your device or to make any accessories. We also have them on our website and we can uh, ship them with the accessory. You can purchase the accessory already made or you can uh, purchase the connectors. So let's get back to what this is doing. The XS12 connector is used for external cell testing and I will show you later in this video how you can connect the accessory for it and what are the benefits of using such accessory and it also has the temperature sensor attached to it. So from the menu you are able to choose which temperature sensors you should use. That's a global setting and that means that you can only use the external temperature sensors or the sensors on board. So we also have opted for four wire measurement right so that's most of it from the front on the back we have the cooling fans uh, 12 cfm uh, 5 volts fans we actually have the ability to set 12 volts fans uh, if you want to in the future all right so this is about the 360 animation but let's switch now to the actual device and uh, see what we can do with it i already made the connections also in the professional version there's reverse polarity protection that will prevent some accidents from happening in the future for burning the board i burned one myself and uh, i thought that's a good idea to have this in the professional version so let me power on this device. By default, the new Megacell charger will try to connect to an access point called MCC router. In the documentation, you'll find the information about how you could set an access point with the right credentials to allow the Megacell charger connect automatically without having to go through the settings. But I also have improved the way you set the Wi-Fi, so it should be pretty easy for the new users. Okay, so let's get nice and close to the display and go over the menu first. The first time you're going to enter the menu, you will see this page. You will see these broken links uh, on the left. This represents the slots of uh, the Megacell charger. If I take a cell and insert it in port number one, you will see that showing there. If you want to see more details about this cell, you go on a long press on the up menu and then you can switch through the cell and you see the information the temperature is 22 degrees uh, the voltage is 4.06 and you also have the resistance there that's the internal resistance on the left we have the MA that's the current that's being pushed or drawn from the cell so it will show positive when uh, the cell is charging and negative when the cell is discharging C cap means charging capacity so when the cell will start charging you will see this counter go on and uh, if the cell started discharging this C cap will change to D cap discharge capacity that's for optimizing the screen and uh, showing both capacities at the bottom you see regular cell that's the state for the slot right now you also have the cycles and it's zero out of one this cycle number can be changed from the chemistry setting I will show you in a second what I mean by that so you can switch through this menu and if you want to have it automatically cycling through the cells you don't you go to settings then go to display I have it turned off right now but the default comes as on you long press on um, cycle then you long press on save okay and you'll notice that if we go to the cell
it will cycle automatically showing the information for each cell okay to exit this you long press again and it will get you to the main page this is the main page of the display and let's let's start with the operations now the first option is measure capacity this will cycle the cell charging it fully to the chemistry setting uh, discharge it to the desired voltage measuring the capacity during this step and will also charge it back to the store voltage you have the charge discharge store dispose stop and back you will notice that if you long press the menu down in most of the menus will allow you to exit that page without having to scroll down and because of that it gets some time to get used to it just don't long press it if you don't want to exit just short press it to go down okay the next option is the settings in the chemistry we have the following values we have lithium ion 0.5 this will charge and discharge the cell with 0.5 amps we have lithium ion 1 that's one amp charging and one discharging and then we have the two the lithium phosphate is for uh, lithium phosphate cells and if you want to customize your setting you can apply let's say this one you'll see the OK button at the top and then you go to custom in the custom it will be loaded the current setting that is applied to the device and the first option is discharging mode that's that's going to allow you to switch between constant current constant voltage and constant resistance the next option is max V that's the max voltage for charging min V it's the minimum voltage for discharging store V is the store voltage where the cell will be stored after the cycle completes the charge and discharge cycle max capacity is a filter that will allow you to stop a process uh, for charging or discharging in case the capacity goes above this value charging current this is the charging current that's set to the ic you can change this value by long clicking then you can select which digit you want to change let's say we say two amps and when we long press again on the same digit you'll see the value changing because of the resolution of the IC for the charging setting it's uh, automatically calculated so you can actually see what will be the value for the charging the pre-charge current can be set as well this is the current that will be pushed through the cell when the voltage is under 2.8 volts term charging current this is the current at which cell will be declared as charged so if it goes under 120 milliamps the charging process will stop discharge current this is just that that's the amount of milliamps you want to set for charging and you will see this capped at 3 amps even if you add a higher value for the hobby version that's with the plastic case I recommend going up to 2 amps if you're testing all 16 slots or going to 3 amps if uh, you leave one slot between each one so you'll be using 8 slots instead of 16 
Discharge res is the discharge resistance. This is on milliohms, and you can uh, set this if you are using the constant resistance option. Max temperature, that's the temperature threshold at which charging or discharging will stop. LV max T, that's the time that will allow low voltage charge. If it goes above two hours, it will stop the process. Max charge T, that's the max charging time that can be allowed. Cycles is how many charging and discharging are done to this cell before stopping the workflow. If you want to apply these settings, go to apply and uh, long press. You will also notice that when you enter to the custom chemistry, you cannot exit by long pressing the menu down button. I added this feature in so you can uh, actually set these values without accidentally exiting this menu. All right, so that's about chemistries. Next one is connectivity. In the connectivity, we have the first option, connection status. And you can see that at the moment is disconnected and there's no IP added to this charger. Start config portal will allow you to set the Wi-Fi of this mega cell charger. I will show you this in a later video. Reset Wi-Fi config will do just that. Wi-Fi, you can disable the Wi-Fi if you prefer to. So at the start of the mega cell charger, it won't try to connect to the um, access point anymore. OTA, it's over the air update. So you can enable or disable this. Mega cell monitor will do automatic update of the firmware if this option is enabled. Connection type, you can switch between JSON, UDP and USB. I'll let it to JSON for now and we'll test that in a later video. And also you have the save of the connectivity. The next option is hardware. You have the option to turn on the fans if you want to. If you turn them on, you will also see this icon appearing here when fan are turned on that icon will also appear if a process started like charging or discharging here you have the option to switch between onboard temp sensors and accessory cgrp is the number of cells that you want to use for grouping that's a more advanced feature and uh, i will show that later in this video Max C GRP is how many cells you want to group together. You have save, you have reboot if you want to, and then you have the shutdown. The last, the last option was the self test. You can perform that test to make sure that your device is working properly. Last option is the display, and I, I already showed what that does with the cycle information. You have factory reset. This will reset all the configurations of this device. And then you have the back. That's about it for the menu, so let's get started on using it. So I can select the measure capacity, long press the menu up, and you'll see that the device started charging the cell. The green light means that the cell is charging. And if we want to see more details about that cell, we can go on the functions, long press it, and it will show us the cell. Right now it shows that it's charging with, uh, with 800 milliamps. We see the process that's doing. We also see the temperature the voltage and uh, also you will see the resistance there. You also see the cycles and right now it's set to run one cycle and it's at cycle zero is the first cycle. Okay, so this cell 
is uh, still charging with 677 milliamps and let's do a discharge as well I will choose to stop and begin discharging right so let me show you also what the accessory is doing this is the accessory that I have created and you can also notice that it has this spring right here which has a temperature sensor that touches the cell you can bend this spring to match the type of cell that you're testing and I bend it so it touches the 18650 cell for now and this gets connected to the female XS12 connector and if we plug this to the slot number one you will see that we have the voltage but we also need to change the temperature reading source to do that we need to switch to settings go to hardware and switch the temp to accessory if we want to have this change saved we also have to save this doing this you'll notice the following if you have slots that don't have a temperature sensor you'll see the temperature dropping to minus 59 degrees celsius if the temperature sensor works properly you will see the temperature from the temperature sensor that's 25.5 degrees a major advantage of this accessory is that you can use it with different size cells and also the heat generating by discharging the cells is not reaching the contacts of the cell and that that can heat the cell a bit and it will it will actually show better performance uh, than if it's cold so if you're hitting the cell up to 40 degrees you will see a small increase in the capacity than if you would compare with a cool cell you're going to get more precise reading using the accessory because you're only seeing the heat generating by the cell and you don't care about the PCB that's a downside for the hobby version of the mega cell charger because you'll get the PCB heated by the discharge resistance if you're discharging with one max 1.5 amps you will not see too much heat generating by this PCB but if you're going above two amps you will see that uh, the cells can tend to get pretty hot uh, and not only from the discharging but also from the PCB as well so I'm showing the good and the bads of this device and uh, hopefully you will not take this uh, as okay this device sucks because uh, this it it it's the limits that we have for this form factor right here for those that want more precise readings they can opt for the accessory or better they can go with the commercial versions that uses the separation of the cells from the PCB we're using wires to to drive um, the electricity to the cell and from the cell the PCB gets cooled separately and you will not get affected measurements by the discharging uh, heat that's generating by the cell right so let's let's run a process with, with this as well let's go to operations and let's charge the cell <coughs> You see that now it's uh, pushing 2243 milliamps into this cell. Okay, I will stop the process for now and move to the last feature that I want to show you for this device. I will have to move the top camera up for this next test that I'm going to show you going to remove the first accessory and introduce you to this accessory right here 
this is uh, an accessory that will allow you to test big cells but let me present it first it has eight connectors for the XS12 and it also has two temperature sensors. The way you use this accessory is first go to the settings and change the max C group to 8. going to save this and once it's saved you will see that the cells are grouped together right now they are very close together and you'll see in a in a second after I connect all the wires what happens This is a 200 amp hour lithium phosphate cell and using this accessory I uh, can actually test this cell and obtain the capacity that this cell has. Using 8 slots you can get up to 32 amps pushed to that cell for charging and you can also get up to 24 amps for discharging. I personally tested uh, up to 16 amps, so 2 amps for each slot. Uh, but if you're adding uh, additional cooling to this device, it will go to 24 amps for discharging as well. So let me connect the negative as well and take a look at the device. Right now it shows all 8 slots combined together. And remember, we also have two temperature sensors that we can place on the cell. Let me do this. I use some Kapton tape that's heat resistance and it sticks quite well. I'm going to stick one and show you a test with the second one, hitting it with my hot air station. So the first one, it, it doesn't matter which one gets hotter, it will read the highest value from those two sensors and apply it to the whole group. But before testing this, I have to set the chemistry for lithium phosphate. I'm going to start with the basic settings from the lithium phosphate preset and then go to custom to modify some of this. You can notice that we have the max voltage 3.65, minimum voltage 2.5, store voltage to 3 volts, max capacity is set to 50,000. I want to increase that because I am running a 200 amp hour cell. You can see that the charging current is set to 1. I want to set it to maximum so I will go to 5 amp and let the system set it to 4.5 amps that's the maximum current for this IC pre-charge current um, it's fine the cell is not discharged discharge current let's set this to 2 2 amp per slot, remember. We're going to discharge with 16 amps this cell. Max temperature 45 degrees, that's okay. Low voltage max charging time, I will set this to 1000. I just added some high numbers <coughs> for this test but after you make an average of what it takes to charge the cell you can uh, use closer numbers that will help you filter the bad cells faster in case they take too long to charge okay so right now we are we have applied the custom chemistry and we are now ready to charge this 
I'll go to operations and let's start charging this. You're going to see that the milliamps shown are 3000. That's the milliamp for charging for each slot. When you're going to use the software, the Megacell monitor or the Python API, you are going to get the total capacity of this and also total current that it's uh, being drawn for, from this. I will keep working on the interface to allow showing that value as well on the interface. But for now, you'll have to combine them together. I'm going to keep working on this, like I said, to make it easier uh, to use in standalone as well. But for these more advanced features, I will encourage you to use a computer and install the Megacell monitor. It's free, comes with a license uh, for these devices and uh, you, you will see much more details using that. All right, so let me show you a quick test scenario. You can see that the temperature is 23 degrees Celsius on, um, on this cell group. If I'm going to start my hot air station Let me set the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius, for example. Let me switch to top camera so you can also see. Let's, yeah. You'll notice that the temperature is climbing. It reached 45 degrees and above and it stopped the process. Once the temperature goes under a set threshold that's set in the software, it will attempt charging again. But let's play with it, see what happens. We stop it again because temperature reached the max. Cool down, started charging again. Not sure if you're seeing on the screen, but the state of the of the cell goes into cooldown. So when it goes into cooldown, it will stop either the charging or the discharging process. Remember, this was the third time we have stopped the process because the cell got too hot. It started charging again and then it will enter a state that the charging failed. That's because it failed more than three times to charge within the set temperature threshold. And that's how the logic for stopping a charging or discharging process due to over temperature is now on the Megasol Charger Professional. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will do more videos about the Megasol Charger, all the features that are available on the Megasol Monitor as well. I'm going to show you the Python library that I developed to control this. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to offer a solution for the Mac users or the people that want to set to control the Megacell chargers from a Raspberry Pi. They can do that through Python. They can set a Raspberry Pi that 
collects data from uh, the Megacell charger and uh, sends commands, do your own uh, workflow, print labels, add them into the database, sort them, anything you want. So that's, that's a huge advantage for those that know some coding. <coughs> I got the library online on my GitHub. I'm going to post a link as well in the product description so you can check that out. But as I said, I will make a video, detailed video showing you how I can control the Megacell charger from Python and how I can get data from it with uh, the USB, via UDP or via the Wi-Fi JSON request. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much to all the people that trusted this project and trusted me again with their money to get the batch one done. I'm working now on the documentation. We're doing some small adjustment on the Megacell monitor to make it work with the professional version. But once that's done, I'm going to start shipping this. I hope this week I will be shipping the first devices. Today I will continue with packing them and uh, writing the firmware and begin shipping them i can't wait to get them to you guys get the feedback from you i tested it a lot uh, i pushed more than three months into developing this new firmware i tested a lot of scenarios but who knows maybe you'll find something that i missed but we'll fix it because i want to get this device to the next level I think I already got it, but I need your feedback to know for sure that I got there. I cannot claim that uh, I have the greatest product on the market for testing cells, but the users can claim that. They need to, to test it first, and then we'll see where this goes. Thank you very much again, guys, for watching this video, and I will see you on the next one.